welcome back to my little corner of the world. This is Casey's Corner. I'm Casey and I am back with another What Makes a Hedgewitch video. If you couldn't tell by the title. Um, this is, I'm back with a very special episode. Um, this is responding to a lot of, I want to talk about what happens when this big, big world feels really small sometimes. When current events happen and we want to do something, but we don't know what. We want to go to our, our best tool bag as hedge witches or as witches or whatever. Um, you know, but as a spiritually practicing person, we want to go to what's in our tool bag and we don't know how, what do we do? How do we get started? That's what I'm here to talk about. Um, for me, if there was a word for other, th other than hedge witch, if there was a word for like a geopolitically focused current events minded witch, that would be me. That's always been a big part of my, um, just spiritualness, even, um, before I was a witch, even just as just pagan or even just as a little kid growing up with a Catholic grandmother, um, and seeing her, you know, her go-to tool was her prayers. Um, you know, as long as I can remember, I have, you know, been aware of what was going on in the world between, you know, my mom, she would, we were always allowed to watch the news. She would pop us in front of the news of, of, of the, or, you know, anytime there was a shuttle taken off, we were watching that. Anything on PBS, we could watch that. There was a set of encyclopedias to answer all my questions right there in the living room. TV encyclopedias. I would pair the two. I'm watching something. I got a question. I want to learn more about it. Grab the encyclopedia. Like it was, we would have a children's set of encyclopedias before I was ready for the big set. But really, I mean, I was into all of them. <laughs> I remember being in a doctor's office at way too, some sort of office that had one of those like play Lego tables with the big chunky Legos. And I remember making a little <laughs> Berlin wall that my, my Lego people, I had family on either side and I put a little door in it so they could go through there. And I feel like that was like one of my earliest, like, you know, visual manifest, like a little, a little, wee, little baby spell, maybe a little, a little manifestation wanting to go on there. Like I, I, I knew this was a thing that was going on. I knew there was, I had to, I, I had to be, you know, like six and, you know, we, we little young and, but I knew this was going on. I knew there were families being kept apart and I wanted to fix that. So I made a door in my little wall and made the families go through and, 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 you know, and, and I did not make that happen. But anyway, but that's always been kind of where my mind's at. Oh, if you hear a bark, that would be my dog. She's needy. Um, but that's always just been where my mind's at. And then, but you know, my, my, you know, Catholic grandma that I mentioned, she was also, you know, she would pop quiz me about all these things that, um, you know, about all the current events. She would have me read, uh, papers and, and the newspapers reports, the, the magazines, um, she'd have me read them to her, uh, and then she'd ask me questions about them. We'd watch the nightly news together or even her tabloid papers and, and, um, stuff. She'd, we, you know, she'd have me read those to her and then ask me what I thought about the things. Um, she would pop quiz me on leaders of our government, of other governments, like the names. It was, you know, I had to pay attention to the world because you never knew when, when your grandmother was going to drop a pop quiz on you. <laughs> but that, that set my mindset, but that's always, but that's why I feel like it's, that's one of the oldest parts of my practice is doing this sort of work. So when um, big things in the world are happening and you see, I see a lot of um, requests and questions about what do I do? How do I help? What can I do? Um, you know, for me, that's just kind of always been secondhand for me. I've, I've been, I, I like to help. <laughs> um, 
so that's what I want to share with you guys. Some ideas on how you can help. Uh, first of all, do it. Just take action as soon as you can. Um, first thing, get to know the region, get to know the context, get to know whatever you are, whatever event, whatever thing you're interested in, in doing something about that, that you feel called to or pulled to do something to, um, try to understand it. First of all, um, if it's a weather crisis of some sort, try to understand the weather patterns in that region. One way, one thing that's always fascinated me, one way I've always worked is the, the air currents, the way, um, I remember learning early on in one of those like amazing fact, you know, kid books about, um, volcano eruptions, you know, where the ash went all the way around the world for this set amount of time and just being fascinated how these tiny little particles can just travel the world and, and, and everybody around the world can be touched and affected in some way. And that's very much how I, I work, you know, my magic when I'm, you know, doing my, doing this sort of energy work is tapping into those sorts of currents that I know can reach all the way around the world. And, and, um, so with weather work, you, you know, if it's a weather event, you definitely want to know what are those currents and stuff in that area. If it's a, um, a region that's been very dry for quite some time and the, the, there's a lot, it's mountainous, you may not want to send a whole lot of rain that could cause dangerous flash floods. You, you might want to, um, think of some sort of way to send support. Um, maybe send some sort of uh, strength and support to those fighting the fires, some sort of um, support to those evacuating from the fires, um, some clarity to those, you know, who need to be warning all these people and to be keeping an eye out, you know, those sort of things. Um, maybe, you know, rain's not always the answer in a fire situation, for example. Um, another thing I definitely advise is to pair whatever you do with some sort of physical action. Um, if it is something like, uh, you know, so any sort of crisis, if, if you can make a donation to a charity or something or some sort of cause that is supporting that, um, do so recently when uh, SB8 was put in effect here in Texas, I, and that is the um, abortion restriction law that pretty much bans abortion in my state past six weeks. Um, and if you do so, anybody can sue you. Uh, that Anybody that helps do so can sue that person. So when that happened, I felt, I, I felt all kinds of things. Um, but I wanted to channel all that energy into some sort of action. So I donated to the um, clinic system that helped me get my abortion when I needed it. I, um, popped on my Facebook page, um, for Casey's Corner. It's, uh, welcome to Casey's Corner. If you search Facebook, you'll find me. Look for my face. I popped on there and went live and I did a spell of, uh, love and support to those being affected by this right now. Um, I paired the two actions and stuff. I went out and joined the, um, the reproduction liberation march in Dallas and stuff. I, I physically took actions to pair with my war, you know, with, with my witchcraft, um, to affect changes in the world around me. Um, right now I wanted to share a spell with you guys. If you may have been looked in the description or whatever you may have heard, uh, I was, I want to close this out with a little spell on my, um, to share, for example, and I'm going to have in the links, uh, for right now, the crisis that we're facing is, uh, that I've been receiving a lot of requests for this about, and a lot of questions about this for about, is a crisis in Ukraine. Um, there's, there's a lot of heartache, um, going on because of the war there. And, um, I've been doing a lot of uh, I and everybody else. That's my other thing that I want to say. Do it as as soon as you can. Don't worry about the timing so much. Do the timing that's worth that that is for you. Um, people all around the world at any given moment 
are doing something for some cause that they care about. And often when it's these big, you know, these big world events, a lot of people are doing something. Um, I'm going to share the links below, particularly, you know, for the Ukraine cause, for, for the cause in Ukraine. Um, there are nightly uh, meditations going on that an artist out of Ukraine is leading um, on her Instagram page. There are different, um, you know, witchcraft groups that are leading, uh, you know, group spell castings, international group spell castings. Um, that's, you know, happening regularly. You can search all these cause, and, and this is usually happening no matter the cause. Whatever's happening, this, this stuff starts to pre spring up. And no matter the religion or faith, this is also happening in Christian and Jewish and all kinds of other, you know, communities um, are also popping up and figuring out what ways they can offer support. Um, and that's, that's just the thing humans like to do. Um, so no matter what, know that you are not alone. This is an instinct humans have always had. Um, you can look throughout history. It's, we, this is what we do. Um, so just dive on in. And if this is what you're feeling called to do, dive on in. Um, do whatever your strengths are. Um, you know, if, if you're good at letter writing or making phone calls or getting out there and, and participating in marches or whatever kind of spell crafting you do right now, I'm going to show you an example of a, uh, of a candle spell because that's my go-to. Um, another thing I like to do is to have focus and things. Um, this sunflower was already there because, uh, that's just a personal thing I, asso I, I associate with, um, a lot because I grow sunflowers here. Um, so when that story popped up, um, about the Ukrainian crisis, and when I learned that sunflowers were also very important to the people of Ukraine, um, that was something I kept for my spellcraft, and I also have, like, an artwork I did, um, it's like a, basically representing the flag, but also sky and a field of, of sunflowers on, um, some chamomile, uh, um, spell paper. Uh, my words were there somewhere. So, like, that's an example of how you can just pair to do an artwork and to do, um, you can create a spell with artwork in just that way. You know, just to use the medium and to, you know, manifest, you know, this is the few, you know, this is what you're trying to manifest in some way. Um, so for my spell, I'm going to do, I have a pine candle and I've already carved into it. You can kind of see I carved, um, Ukraine into this to prep it. I also have an herb mix that was um, prepped previously, and this has various things, so you can make your own. Um, you know, just look up, you know, whatever, you know, associations, the herbs that you have or plants or that you grow around you, or if you have sunflowers, um, there's some sunflowers in here, there's um, lavender, there's various things all ground up. Um, and I also, I'm going to use my dragon's blood oil. So I'll dress my candle first with dragon's blood. That's, I use that for strength. Um, the pine candle is going to be so for cleansing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that dressed real quick. I'm going to do the oil first. And then my herbs. And again, like I said, always good to have a handy dandy rag hanging around to wipe your hands. And then I'm just going to use just a little bit of this. You don't want to use too much herbs um, in your spell candles. You don't want them to get too hot because once those herbs start burning, especially if you're using glass, this is going to be metal, but it's also going to be on um, you know, a ceramic plate. So you don't want it once it gets to the bottom. You don't want too much um, fuel to be there to burn and make that too hot to crack your plate. Um, I will also be keeping an eye on this um, and making sure that doesn't happen. If this was going to be something a little hotter, I definitely recommend having a bed of sand or something to disperse the heat. Um, this is gonna be something that, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna go ahead and move it off the ceramic plate um, to a, another, um, uh, thing, protective heat 
thing, a safer thing to burn to keep an eye on. Um, this is just easier for you guys to see. Carrying on some amethyst's dress and everything, I've um, done a little prep, prep, prep work, focusing my energy into these things. Um, but if you you know like, you can do so um, to take some more time. Um, focusing on what you're doing with your work. I'm going to go ahead and light that and continue doing that while this burns. And go ahead and say goodbye. And thank you so much for watching. Definitely check out um, the links in the description below about other ways you can support the cause in Ukraine. There's um, various... Uh, um, pagan organizations you can support there are various um historical reenactment crafters um ways you can support them by via gift certificates um because there are artists there are um international organizations like i said cash is always the best way no matter the cause it is the quickest best way to help but you need to make sure it is you know not just any old organization if don't just, you know, click on any old, you know, Facebook ad that pops up saying here, you know, donate here to help the cause. Um, definitely make sure it's some sort of um, accredited, uh, well-known organization with a, repu with a good reputation. Um, so I'm going to have some ideas down below uh, for, for organizations that I do know that are right there on the ground moving, you know, dealing with the logistics and they have the, um, you know, the, the, his, the experience to do so. I'm going to go focus on this. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a great whatever. Uh, and like I said, just, you know, if you feel called to do anything, just do it. Um, thank you. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, as always. Um, bye.